So it's been about three weeks since I got the Ableton Move. And honestly, I can't stop using it. There is just something about the simplicity and the workflow that keeps pulling me back in. It's so quick to get ideas down and I keep finding myself reaching for it, even when I don't plan to. But if you have spent any time with the move, you have probably hit the wall at some point, I mean the four track limit, but as many of you know, there is ways around it. So in this video, I'm just going to quickly show you how I work around that limitation and keep the creative flow going. So let's dive in. Okay, so here we have a typical jam on the move and obviously I have used all the four tracks, so let's have a listen. So we can solo some tracks here, here's the drums, some bass, some pad, some vibraphone. But as you can hear, it's pretty basic and not much happening. So at this point, I obviously want to add more tracks. And I just wanted to show you quickly how I do that and what tracks I think are well suited to resampling. Because it's resampling we are going to do here. And in this case, I think that the bass track is perfect for resampling and also um, the vibraphone works well. So before I do anything, I always make a copy of the pattern in its original form. So let's do that. Go out to set overview and press copy and set it here. So now we can start to manipulate things here. It's obviously always good to have a backup of what you are changing. So now we move into the drum rack. And if we listen here, we can see that these pads are used, but so this one is not used. So we can sacrifice that to one of the tracks. And I'm going to start off with the bass. So the thing I do is just to solo the bass, press record and the pad I'm going to use. So it's done. Now we can unsolo that, go out here and just remove that. So it's gone. One more thing we need to do here is that the bass track was four bars. This is only two bars, as you can see here. So we need to double the length here, and then we can just press down a trig here, and we have the bass. And obviously you can um, change the volume of this here. So I think it's good there. Okay, so the bass is done. Let's do the same thing for the vibraphone. So we will use this and just solo here and press Rick and the pad. So it's done. So we can just put down the trig here and delete the original track. Let's have a listen. So it works, I may increase the volume here a bit. So now we have freed up two tracks here, so we can do whatever we want here, because it sounds exactly the same as before, but now we can continue to add stuff, which is awesome. So let's just do that. Let's find a preset that we want to use, voice maybe. Thank you. 
Yeah, nothing special. Just showing you what you can do. Let's continue with this. Yeah, so that's how I add more tracks to the move. And I think this process is very simple and it does not hinder me in my compositions. I can just continue. It's not that it's blocking me or anything because I rarely use like every 16 sounds here. So it doesn't bother me to sacrifice some of these for some extra tracks. So you can obviously add more and more stuff here, but I think that six tracks is like the sweet spot. Four tracks is a bit too limiting, so it's good that you can get around that. One other thing is that not every sound is well suited to resample. This sound, for example. It has a long tail of reverb, as you can hear, and that's very hard to resample without getting pops and clicks. So I would stay away from sounds like that. But bass sounds, um, key sounds often work very well. Yeah, so that's all I had. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!